gentlemen, 34 drivers will be at the starting line of the main World 600 here at Charlotte tomorrow. Those drivers who do not qualify today will go back home never having seen the green starter flag. Those drivers bring their cars, their crews, and their hopes to Charlotte each year. Charlotte Speedway, nicknamed the granddaddy of NASCAR. Its spirit and its history is reflected in the kind of men who journey here. They take pride in coming, and Charlotte and NASCAR take pride in welcoming them. These men know the odds they face in this competition, and these sportsmen have learned through hard-won experience to accept the risk live with disappointments in their constant quest for that often elusive victory. Tomorrow, when this great race begins, you will be witnessing the competitive best in the field of stock car auto racing. The finest mechanics, engineers, crew chiefs, without whose support, no driver can exist. It is this combined effort that builds winning cars and winning teams. And speaking of winning teams, Tomorrow, Richard Petty will receive the first leg trophy of this year's annual Wind Wind Cup competition. Petty is presently leading in the point stand and receives a check for $40,000. The Wind Wind Cup competition is then yet another incentive for American stock car racing. And its list of winners reads like a who's who in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. On a personal note, Charlotte Motor Speedway has extended a special invitation to a man too long absent from the racing scene, Lee Petty, whose driving record was surpassed only by his sons, won his first NASCAR Grand National competition here in Charlotte some years ago. We're hoping that Lee will join us today to watch his son attempt to win this crazy classic and by so doing, the first driver in NASCAR history to win every major speedway competition. Gentlemen, start your engine. <laughs> Yeah, I know, not for six years. Why? Don't matter why, I just don't. Well, I had never won in Charlotte. Well, it's all right, son, nobody wins them all. Well, I'd be the first. Well, if you want it, and you go on out and take it. Well, if you come, I might can win. I told you I don't race, and I don't watch racing. Now, how many times I have to tell you that? I don't race. I don't watch races. Well, if you come, I might can win. I don't race. I don't watch reasons. I don't race. I don't watch reasons. Richard Petty in car 43 and teammate Pete Hamilton have dominated this race here at Darlington today. Petty is presently running in first position and Hamilton is moving in fifth position. Hamilton is driving car 42, a number that has carried several drives in these past few years since Lee Petty retired from racing. Petty lost control of his car. Now, you people stand clear for the emergency vehicle. Stand clear, please. Julie, you'll stay with the kids. He's unconscious. Now yeah, you go and pass. Field clear. Clear the infield, please. The fire crew is moving out onto the track as the caution flag slows down the field. Everybody, please remain calm. They're pulling Teddy with a totally demolished vehicle now. You two, stay here. So that's how it works. Stay in 
down to the pack. You got to push hard in the rough spots. I said you got to push hard in the rough spots. George Fellows, I want you trying a little mighty in front of a Greensboro. My bad side. I said my name was Fellows. Yeah, I'm a writer. I know. I heard you. I heard you. I'm curious. Next driver like you, three times Grand National Champion. You figure this will dull your boy's taste for driving like it did yours when you took one to the fence? Now, if I understand that question correctly, you better ask that, Richie. But after you went through the wall of Daytona, you walked away from racing. Why? It's my choice. Thing is, though, you haven't been to race since. I don't race, and I don't watch races. Not even your son? The conversation has ended. Racing's been good to the petties. Very good. Your news. I think you owe me some answers. Now, what we got here is a matter of a possible concussion. Now, Richard may snap out of it and just shuffle out of here. On the other hand, you may not. Until I know which way it's going, I don't owe you nothing. Well, that's the end of this conversation. What I am and where I'm from is my concern and my concern only. Get a little uh, sweetening on that engine. Yeah, sure, a little bit here and there. Bought, I rebuilt. Yeah, watch the upholstery there, Richie. Don't mess it up. Yeah, it was a 28 Ford. Uh, uh, tore it down from uh, firewall to radiator. Got about another 10 to 15 miles an hour out of it, too. Get out. What? I said get out. Hey, it's my bad side. What? My bad ear.
I'm, my, my name is, is Petty, Lee Petty, a Randall in North Carolina. Curtis Cross. Hey, you from uh, Quebec? Montreal, Baton Rouge. I move around a lot. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> you feel like going in and warming up some of that cornbread? Lee and Richard have been kidnapped by some wild fool in a hopped up car. We have driven this truck across a quarter of the state and ourselves half out of our minds looking for them. And you want me to heat up cornbread? Well, you know you're the only one can make that old gas stove work. Oh, Elizabeth, now don't worry. Lee and Richard, they're bound to come home sooner or later. Maybe in a pine box. Hey, you ran out of my wagon. Oh, by golly, I did, didn't I? Julie, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to have to buy him a new one, I expect. I ain't talking about the Dern wagon. I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm going in the house and warm up that cornbread my own self. Hey, Ma, you think Daddy knit your desk? Well, you do have a way of putting things, Maurice.
ordinary stock model beats up 60 horsepower. I tell you, then they we left them revenues like they were standing still. I agree. Judy, where you been? They're out of gas. Why, they nobody would have caught it. That, that Curtis, he drives like there's no tomorrow. Curtis? Curtis Cross, the former owner of this lovely little piece of machinery. You gonna tell me where you been, Lee? What, for, former owner? Uh... What did you say that former owner for, Lee? Because it's the truth. Well, I know you don't lie. Well? Well? Did you see us take off? I'd like a rooster after a June bug. Yeah. Where you been, Lee? In jail. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he was carrying 60 gallons of white light in the back of this thing here. Didn't she beautiful? Look at that space in there, huh? Yeah, and it took us oh, it's been a part of two hours for Curtis and me to convince the law that Richard and I was just along for the ride. Curtis? Uh, he Curtis Cross, former owner. Former owner? Former owner. Well, the poor fella, he had to have a lawyer, you know. So well, I just got one heck of a good deal. <laughs> you bought this thing? Is it really yours? Well, yeah, you like it? Oh, do I, it does a cat have a tail? <laughs> <laughs> How much you pay for it, Lee? Uh, look at here, 180 horsepower. How much did you pay for it, Lee? It's got special carbs on it, look at that, and, and, and a special ground barrel. What did you pay for it, Lee? $300. Three hundred dollars? What are you going to do with this car? Did I show you the suspension? No. Right, look, look, see? Right underneath there, they got those tie bars in there. I, I, keeps uh, heeling down on the curves, you know? Lee, what are you going to do with this car? What are you going to do with it, Lee? We're going racing! Oh, no! That's what I figured. <laughs> Lee, the hash is on fire. Lee, the house is on fire. What'd you say, honey? Hey, Lee, the house is on fire. Well, the house is on fire. Why didn't you say something? Oh, uh... I told you, you should have heated the cornbread. I guess we'll go and move in with my mom. Well, there is a bright side. Yeah, well, I'd like to see it. Well, I mean, now, now I gotta go race. No, so we gotta get ourselves a new house, clothes. We own a truck, remember? That's faster.
Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think, I think? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't ask. 75, 85, 95, 110, and 20% for the house. 20? Oh, my. Well, there you go. There's half for Mama, put in the bank, and half for Baby. Hey, do you know something I don't know? Yeah, I know the Baby needs new tires. Now, how's it feel winning our first race? Well, the car costs 300 uh, The house is worth about twelve. Uh, his uh, lost wages are about six. I figured this win has cost us about $2,000. Well, man has got to do what he's got to do.
Scratch two petty cars. How bad? The cars total. He's okay. We got wrapped up, Dale. Call it a day. Anything? Nope. I'll let you know. You gonna be okay? We'll be here. Everything's gonna be just fine. Except I'm going out of my head. Kennedy, total. It had to happen this way. Bound to hang myself with my mouth sooner or later. Hey, I'm sorry. I thought it'd be a good idea to get you on the yearbook staff so you could break in and meet the kids since you're new here. I didn't think they'd work you to death after school, you know. You know? What? Why well, I got you on the yearbook staff? No. I just told you. What? Why well, I got you on the yearbook staff. To meet the kids, because you're new here. Yes, I am. Yes, you am what? What? Okay, which one is it? You like them tall or short? The tall one and the right. Petty. Who? Richard Petty. Lee Petty is his father. Oh. Lee Petty, the race car driver. Oh. You want some advice? Okay. Forget it. Why? Because you ain't got the right equipment. 
I mean, you got nice lines, kid, but you ain't got a carburetor or a transmission or whatever. What? All Richard Petty ever talks about is race cars, he and Bobby. Nothing else? If Richard doesn't talk about cars, he just doesn't talk. Believe me, we've all tried. Oh, I don't know nothing about race cars. If my daddy drives over 50, I get sick. Like I said, forget it. You want a Coke? There's a yellow thing with black spots on your neck. Maybe you'd rather eat that. Maybe tomorrow. Hi. How's your plug? Your spark plugs, I mean. Um, what are your favorite brands? Brands. It is your favorite brand. A plug. That is. Ah, uh, well, I guess you don't have a favorite. Well, like I say, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Say, listen, would you like to drive me home? I mean, I really would like it if you'd drive me home. Okay. Do you drive? Huh? I mean, like your father. No, nah, he's faster. Faster? I pity him. Oh, I do too. You do too what? Pity him. No, pity him. Me and Morris pity him. Oh. We always have. Oh. Do you enjoy pitting him? Sure. When we first started, he couldn't afford a crew, so we filled in. Uncle Julie helped us in. Matter of fact, uh, he couldn't even afford the car. He <laughs> sort of borrowed one. A couple of NASCAR fishers better get those baby faces out of sight. You too. Don't look like a kid. Have all your life. I'm not a rich man. This is the only car I own. I'm beginning to have some doubts. Yeah, well, now, I can understand that. I, uh, Mr. Phillips, I really can't understand it. But don't you see that with your half of the big prize money that I'm going to win here today, why, well, you can buy 10 or 10, 20 of I don't cars. know nothing about auto racing, Mr. Penny, but I do know there's a certain risk. Risk? Well, now, don't, don't, don't you worry none about that, uh, Mr. Phillips. If I were you, don't, don't you worry ahead none about it. I, I'm going to take all the risk. But what if you wreck or something? Wreck? Mr. Phillips, that's, that's, uh, that's not a nice thing to say. I mean, that's no way to talk to a man. I mean, you could undermine a, man, I mean, undermine a man's confidence with a uh, talk like that. I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. I think you hit him right where he lives. I've, I've heard he's really very good. Oh, well, tell him. Tell him what? Well, well, tell him what you just said. Tell him you heard he's very good. Listen, Mr. Penny, I know your reputation as a race driver is just real good. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I got nothing to worry about. Yeah, well, I appreciate your concern, Mr. Phillips. But you understand, of course, that I never think about or worry about my own driving. Uh, well, then, I want you to drive it. I want you to drive my car in this race right here today, now. Well, I, I don't know. No, I want you to drive it. I got every confidence, Mr. Petty, that me and you are going to make a lot of money. Well, no, no, not, not if you're scared. Uh, no. But I ain't scared, Mr. Petty. I ain't scared a bit. I want you to drive my car. Well... Really? I mean, you I'd sure be, you sure? I'd be proud if you drove my car. Are you sure now? I'm sure, Mr. Petty. I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to drive my car just fine.
Would you like to know what I learned? Well, I'm going to tell you what I learned. I learned that your car ain't fit for race. It's too heavy. The suspension is like a baby buggy. It sucks oil like a hog, and it drinks gas like a drunken sailor. It drifts in the corners like a rowboat, and it steers like a pregnant truck. I'm making a kill to that thing. In short, it ain't worth fire to blow it to hell. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, Billy, why are we living like this? Well, a man's got to do what he's got to do. Calls his old man Daddy. <laughs> Do I know you? Oh, uh, Richard. Meet uh, Ed Kohler. He's been driving Norton tracks mostly. Your uh, Daddy took a first away from me at Irish Hills last week. I thought I'd come down here and just take it back. You're sure welcome to try if you stick by the rules. I drive by only one rule. Do whatever you have to to win. Everything else just words. Now listen to me, Kohler. I've called these meetings so us drivers can get together, so we can get a voice with NASCAR. Now, they're nice people, and on, we're all growing. And there's a lot of money in it, especially now with uh, factory sponsorship and all. Now, if we don't kill ourselves with crazy driving, we might all share in it. I heard that in there. Apparently, you aren't listening. I heard it. I just think it's stupid. I'm on the track. I don't intend to worry about any union brother in the car behind me. Or in front of you? Anywhere. Racing is not a team sport, Betty. was never meant to be. The track's one of the few places left in this world where the man with a guts for it can take it off. You ever forget that when you race against me? Ever. He makes me so mad I could just spit. <laughs> Good luck tomorrow, Richard. Oh, uh, by the way, I've uh, wished your father the same. Sounds fair enough. Huh? Good. Let's go. Wait a minute. What? Do you have to race against your daddy tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's just the first time that uh, we've had two cars in the same race. Well, you could hire another, uh, another driver to take your place. We're a family. We're a team. So you should respect each other. We do respect each other. But what's that got to do with the race tomorrow? Richard, come here. What? Well, did you do any good? Nope. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. things up, huh? Young women is having a tizzy. Well, I don't see why they should. Now, you go on and order them out for them come here a few days, I guess. I'm going home. I'll drive you. I'll drive myself. There's no one on her. Same thing with no one on me. Now, you just hush up. Just hush up. Now, it has been discussed. It is all settled. No, it is not settled, and it is not. And will you quit turning your bad ear to me? Every time we argue, he turns his bad ear. I first started noticing it about five years ago. What's sir? I said he was... Oh, yes, smart aleck kid. <laughs> it's simply a matter of good business, that's all, isn't it? I mean, the first two cars that come in, they share the prize money with that much closer to attract the sponsor. It don't matter which of us comes in first in which car. Now, I know you two better than anybody else in the whole world. And I know it is not going to be that simple. Now, you won too many times to ever want to settle for second. And you are too anxious for your first win ever to hold back. Now, when you two go out there to that track tomorrow, I just want you to remember that I said it first. Well, she's 
she's right about one thing. Yeah, it's, I only drive one way. To win. It's always been that way with me. Yeah, I always will be. For both of us. to say that once too often. One question. Yeah? How? How, how, what? How could you do that? Do what? Hi, honey. You're grinning. Yeah. You're still grinning. So? How can you after what he just done to you? All he done was win the race, yeah. It could have been the other way around. Yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. You made him look foolish in front of thousands of people. You feel foolish? No, I don't feel foolish. You feel foolish? Yeah, I don't feel foolish. You don't look foolish. Why did you have to protest? I mean, who would have known the difference? Nobody would have known. We would have known. known. We'd have known. Yeah. You really don't care. You really don't care. Sure, I care I didn't win the race. I'm going to get him next time. You know you want to bet there, boy. <laughs> You're crazy. You're both crazy. The whole lot is crazy. You know, I think you'd better marry that girl. You.
idea on the bat? You know what day it is. Tuesday the 21st. Our wedding day. I know that, honey. Then what if you went out here? This thing's supposed to turn 5,000 RPMs, and I can't get it up about 4,500. I'm trying to make adjustments on the carburetor. Richard, our guests are here. Honey, I know that, but if I don't get this thing running, we'll come back empty. I don't know about your RPM or your carburetor. I just want you to get in the house and marry me. Honey, I got every intention. I know they just named you rookie of the year. I know you just won eight thousand dollars. I know without the money we couldn't afford to get married, but I am not going to show you with a race car on my wedding day. It'll only take a couple of minutes. Richard, get in the house and get dressed. Uncle Bert Spiller. Long day. Everybody had a good time. There's some punch left downstairs. carburetor. Uh, I, I got the RPMs up now. It's, uh, it's turning 5,000 now. In years to come, someone will ask, someone always does, about my wedding night. Well, I'm thankful I'll be able to look them straight in the eye and tell them that on my wedding night, the most important night of my life, Richard did finally get his RPM up. Daytona 500 gets underway. Point of view and interest. There are three generations of Pettys with us today. While Lee Petty and son Richard again battle each other on the track, Richard's young son Kyle will be watching his father and grandfather from the stand. It's Kyle's first look at American stock car auto racing. But judging from the Petty family's past performance, we kind of feel it won't be his last. Who knows? Things keep up before long. We're liable to see three generations of Pettys right out there on the track. Meanwhile, young Kyle is going to be witnessing a battle of giants here today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this will be a day the Daytona historians won't soon forget. Track temperature is a sizzling 120 degrees, and the heat of competition is even higher. After only 36 laps, 10 cars are already out of the competition because of mechanical failure. Lee Petty and Ed Kohler are fighting it out for third position behind Firehall Roberts and Arn Chan. With some problem, which apparently has put him out of the race. Clear for the emergency vehicle. Clear 
for the emergency vehicles, please. Eddie is all right. He's all right. He's running from the car. Eddie's apparently uninjured. Did really crash? Yes, honey. You could say that. In the 60th lap of this race, Fireball Roberts and Marvin Pange have been treading the lead with Junior Johnson and Lee Petty as the blistering pace continues here at Daytona International Speedway. And Cobra of Irish Hills continues to challenge the leader, but his car, number 73, is white and cold in front of the pack. Somebody is watching over these drivers here today. And now Lee Petty makes his move, challenging the leaders. And now Ed Kohler tries to draft on him. And now he's trying to get under him. Petty and Kohler have hurdles through the fence in turn four. Again, again, the yellow caution is out. And this race turns into a driver's nightmare. The caution is out, but most of the drivers haven't seen it yet. Petty and Kohler literally left the track in a split second. Again, the emergency vehicles are being dispatched, trying to get across the track. And the cars, the cars finally respond to the caution flag. There's heavy smoke visible over the fence. One of the drivers seems to have run free of the wreckage of car number 73. That would be Ed Kohler. Kohler is all right. But Petty's car is totally demolished and in flames. They're trying to pull him free of the wreckage now. But the car is totally demolished. We have no report on Petty's condition. You people on the infield, please clear for the ambulance. Please clear. Please clear for the ambulance. Well, uh, Richard and uh, Maurice come back yet? Kurt is cold. <laughs> I think they all went out looking for Kohler. I can't say I tried or, or wanted to stop him. Well, you should have. Kohler didn't have anything to do with what happened today. He hurt Lee. Lee hurt himself. Now, if the track felt that Kohler had fouled him, they would have lodged a complaint. Maybe it wasn't obvious to them, but it's what it is to us. Linda, Lee has been racing all his life. And he knows the risks. He wants it. It's what keeps him alive. And Richard is cut out of the same cloth. I can't accept that. Oh, well, you'd better. After today, we are in for some tough times. We're nearly broke. So, you had better get on Richard's team. Or you're going to have some lonely days ahead. This isn't exactly the best time to announce it. I'm going to have a baby. Well... I am glad to know that you and Richard have been working at something together. <laughs> Why don't you spool down that Winnie of yours? Ma, ain't he a chuckle and a half tonight? Old Leds for the getting a little edgy. Put a man through the fence today. Little Paul was for thought there. Teddy put himself through that fence. Sure is to me. Too much time following you around could get to be fearful. It occurs to me. Also, Rand usually is a shaky place to live. He should know. He's been there a lot more times than Teddy. Only to visit, sweet lips. Only to... Circuit. Turn it off. Why? 
trying to organize the drivers. We've all been trying to organize. Yeah, but uh, he's the one who told them I started it. We can't do that to you, Curtis. Well, they've done it. One tired, faded, also land. That'll be cheap way to make an example, isn't it? So you see? He's mine, too. Well, I uh, told you how it was with me. Yeah, I heard you can get by with you. It was an accident. Yeah. That's what they'll call it. That's what they'll call it. Look, I'm uh, sorry it's hurt, but uh, it's got nothing to do with me. Hey, caller. Did you know that old Curtis got thrown out of the circuit today? I heard. Before anybody else out there. Told you I was against you. Yeah, that's right, you did. Well, let me tell you something uh, real special. Lee Petty raised his son with real manners and a fair play, and always told him to act like gentlemen. Good for them. And they don't drink. Did you know they don't drink? Good for them. Uh, look, uh, Compete to uh, get hurt. We all know that. Uh, Betty competed and uh, got hurt. Got <laughs> any of us. Go! You're right, caller. It can happen to any of us. I'm sure glad we didn't come here and start no fight. Well, he could have had accidents, you know? Yeah. I'm glad he did because he found such a better matter. Yeah, I think he's pretty good about it. Hang down the road. I'm traveling hang down the road. Dead ended again. Wondering when I'll lose me this hang down the road. Hang down the road. Toting her hand down hard I'm asking the rain I'm asking again When does the sunshine start? Spread my dreams in Asheville Spread them in Des Moines Now I'm off to Charlotte A little shy of home I rule myself and I've always schooled myself. Nobody's too old. I'll go a little long. But maybe I fool myself. Sure as the trees keep growing. And sure as the rivers have flowed. I've got to get my wheels free. Free of this hang down. Nobody's too old, I'll go a little long, but maybe I fool myself. Sure as the trees keep growing, sure as the rivers have flowed, I've got to get my wheels free, free of this hang down road. I've got to get my wheels free. Free of this.
Well, I'll be... I'll be... How are you? Okay, okay. How you been doing? Oh, fine. I had it going pretty good, you know. But I blew a hose two laps short of first money. So you was. It's good to see you, Curtis. Hey, how are you doing pretty good for yourself? Yeah, things is looking up. Yeah, well, uh, I come down here just, uh, just for kicks, you know. Uh, these outlaw tracks are a hell of a lot of fun. Just to keep my hands in it, you know. I got a lot of good things going for myself. Real good things. Listen to me trying to bull you. Why do you have to find me in a place like this? Curtis, I need you here. It's been about a year and a half since Daddy had his wreck, and he's talking about driving again. What I hear, uh, he can't handle it. You're right. But I don't want to be the one that has to tell him, but I think you can. Mm -hmm. Listen. I have driven, and I've seen many more times this tailpipe than he's seen of mine. Uh-uh. I'm not going to talk to him. You can do it, Curtis. You're the only one that can. Just just be gentle. <laughs> gentle with your paw? Yeah, you just kind of drop around for breakfast in the morning and take him outside and just, uh, you know, talk old times. You really believe he'll be happy to see me? Heck yeah. The whole crowd would be glad to see you. Just change your shirt. Gone two hours. Some conversation they're having. Let's go find Curtis, he was driving a, uh... Yellow modifier. I don't know who's in that sewer. But you do have the distinct impression that your father is in it. Yeah, it does kind of look that way, doesn't it? Well, would you care to go out there and flag him in before he wrecks what good bones he ain't already broken? Would you? Well, are you just going to stand there? No, uh, it's like I'm going to sort of yell for him. Come on, Alex, I 
but ten laps. Now, the real truth is that neither of us are what we once were. So that's it. That's all. That's the end of it. Mr. Petty? Guess he just wanted to take a little nap. Never could wake him up. Come on, let's go. Remember the first day we met, you gave me a ride home? Yeah. Did you know I was scared stiff? Why are you bring that up now? No reason. Except your driving scares the daylights out of me sometimes. Me too. Sometimes. Well, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. You know, you ought to marry that girl. I did. Oh, that's right, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you did it all. All of it's been done. Well, not quite. Not quite? Well, you got trucks over there to pull trailers to haul cars in. You got buildings that go from here to Never Never Land. You're building 14 race cars. You build on any more, you're going to end up in the road. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Charlotte. What about Charlotte? Well, we're running out of this coming week. Yeah, I know, I know. I read the paper. I'd like for you to come. I don't race, and I don't watch races. For six years you hadn't been. Why? Don't matter why, I just don't. Well, I had never won in Charlotte. It's all right, son. Nobody wins them all. Well, I can be the first. Well, if you want it, you go on out and get it. You come, and uh, maybe I will. I told you, I don't race, and I don't watch races. Now, how many times do I have to tell you that? Lee? Well, 
what did he want of me? What I did, he did better. I gave him, he got more of for himself. I mean, he don't need me in Charlotte. You needed him. Him and Maurice. Charlotte in 1948. Hard Buick and two scared kids. Now, you needed them, and they was there. Now, you owe him, Lee. Owe him? Owe him? I gave him everything I had. I raised him good. I raised him and I beat him. And I taught him how to race others and beat them. Owe him? No, woman, that debt has been paid. Lee, we're not talking about debts. Deep down inside you, you ain't quit. Oh, you think you have, but you haven't. You still want to be first. Well, you are the best man I ever knew. But you can't be first no more. And you can't quit. So you're just hanging somewhere in there in the middle. And it's a mighty poor place for a man to live. If you ever want to have peace of mind, you are going to have to go to Charlotte with Richard.